All right. I think we're going to begin our program, and tonight we get to celebrate with Kathy Bungle. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much, Padre. It's so wonderful to be here with our family here tonight in this celebration really and communion service. Yes. Yes, and you're an ordained minister within our community, and one of your gifts are singing, music, musicians, and I know you're learning a new instrument. Isn't that correct? I am. Listen. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you snuck it in there. I can play it right now. You know, you just do this drum thing. And, and, yeah, but I am working on it, so it's always more. There's always more. There is. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I like how you say that because it's true. There's gifts and then there's other gifts. Like we keep growing and expanding. And, and so I know you're experiencing that. And as a musician, your repertoire is growing. So, and which offers our community more times to become part of that presence that the music actually helps provide, attune us to the sounds of heaven. So thank you, Kathy. Oh, I heard Appreciate that. It. Attune us, right? Yeah. A tuna, yes. A tuna, yes. It might be a new Paul word. Yes. So, yeah. Wonderful. But I'm looking forward to this. Kathy and I prepared yesterday for this. Compared notes, let's put it that way. And we were having a ball. <laughs> I'll have it to say that. Time. It's just like, it was I wish we recorded it because it would have been perfect. <laughs> With all the joy in between it, but presence showed up. So our our intention tonight is to celebrate Christmas as a community for those that can be on it and those who will listen later. We all have, I call it, a Christmas spirit in our hearts. For those that walk with Christ, this is a special time of year. We do celebrate Christmas. December 24th, but that can be questioned, the exact time that Christ was born. But for purposes of being in one accord, we'll, we'll just celebrate this season right now. And isn't today winter t- solstice? It's somewhere around this time. I think uh, that's today. a very good question, Padre. I did not research that, but it usually oh, yeah. occurs somewhere between the 20th and the 22nd. So, yes. Yeah. So we're within that range. So I'm dec- decreeing it's winter solace <laughs> today. <laughs> By the power invested in me, <laughs> we're going to do this. And isn't it amazing? Again, it's that shift in seasons, but also in consciousness. And really, the winter solstice, it's, it's really about letting go, clearing our energy field for it is. more service, longer service, but also to have a deep gratitude for what we have. So it really matches up, I think, with the Christmas season or for those walking in the Advent season, it's about preparation for what's coming. And yes. what I put in our um, email was there's someone seeking us, but just like the three wise men, they went seeking the light, the love, actually the, the, the Savior uh, from the Old Testament. It's interesting. I know I'm going way off already, but excuse me for getting excited. <laughs> Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the birth of Christ that God would send a son to save us. And it's like, isn't that amazing? 700 years before the birth it of Christ, amazing. it was predicted. It's written in the sacred scriptures. That's how we follow the light but again there's how big god is just like the three kings they followed the star yeah that it sounds really like a lead for a song here padre i believe it is but it's okay what are we following but go ahead kathy let's it's tap true. into that well, beautiful well, spirit we're we're following a star of wonder aren't we? Yes. That wonder. And just, we just came off of a retreat, the West of Heaven Christmas mm. celebration of being wondrously made. Uh, it's That's that it. same being marvelously made. And, fo- and now here we are. Here's that star of wonder. So let me just do a little bit of that for us here. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, king and God and sacrifice. 
singing it when I was in grade school, good old Catholic grade school. And yes. that song always now illuminates in my heart because many, many moons ago I sang that. And when you are when you get to be long, become part of a group, whether singing, school, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever it is, choir, there's a, a conobrary that we really love to be recognized in that light. And Kathy, if you would think about it, the, can you imagine that the very stars that are, if we walk outside tonight and see these stars, those stars were around when Christ was born 2,000 years ago. They were it's shining amazing. the same light. It is that amazing. Is so amazing. It, yeah. It's a, the, there's God. Yes. Yes. I was reading a little bit about uh, the background of this song, We Three Kings, and John Henry Hopkins, Jr., he wrote this song and wrote it in such a way that it would be open and friendly for children. It was kind of an introduction. It was first done for his family, and then people loved it, and it just kind of grew from there. They, They were talking about this star, the star of Bethlehem. And just the amazing thing about this star shining and bringing this point of light down, like like a, an arrow pointing here, yeah. here, this is yeah. where you come. This is where the Magi need to come to mm. and to find, to find the Christ child, to find that, that morning star. I was also looking in a couple references in the Bible. It says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you the testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. That was in Revelation. Mm. And in in 2 Peter, it talks about, we're not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when he received honor and glory from God the Father. And then it goes on and it says, you must pay close attention to what we wrote, to to these prophecies, right? For their Mm, words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until Mm. the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Wow. Well, isn't that about our preparation for this season, Advent or winter solstice? The idea is it, there's darkness, but there is light that will shine through all this darkness. And within yes. the Catholic tradition right now, a lot of things are stripped away in the church just so when Christmas comes and we light the candles and it's, the light has come and then we get to celebrate the birth. But our own indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So as a part of the Christian makeup and maybe others is sometimes we fast so we give up something or make less in us <laughs> more room for god so to speak yes but it also positions us to go deeper into our whole walk with god and just as the magis had to travel to get to to find the birthplace of christ so you and i in our prayer time in our meditation we want to go deeper into that 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 darkness that brings this wonderful light to us. And I think we're doing a beautiful job of that as a community, but then individually as we walk with our Lord. Yes. And then, Padre, I am thinking ahead also to, I mean, I'm not trying to put the cart before the horse, but I'm thinking about where we're we're going to be going with our ministry at our next retreat, which is, isn't it about the brilliant darkness? Yeah, the bright darkness. Bright darkness. I mean, just this contrast of the light. Yes, it does. Mm. It grows. It fills us. Yes, it really yes. does. And my understanding, I sang the Three Kings and Silent Night, which is such a beautiful melody. I think most people 
hear it or understood it or it brings back memories. And I remember one of my favorite things was to go to midnight mass as a family. And it's usually in the Midwest, it's cold or a lot of times below zero, but we passed into yes. the car and yes. we went. And it's like, we really didn't have a lot of heat, but thank God I had brothers and sisters who were sitting next to us squished into the car. But okay. these memories are so rich. Right. And I remember wanting to go because I love the sing. Even now, even though my voice isn't great, back then I would bellow out these songs and everybody could hear me in church because I love church. But I think more so I love God, but didn't recognize what that was. And for you, Kathy, did you have good memories with Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? And I also remember going to midnight mass sometimes. Not We didn't do that every year, but sometimes we would. And it would be, the church would be so packed, so crowded. Yeah. And somehow we would end up sitting with somebody with that was next to somebody that was wearing like a lot of perfume. But <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. But, but then the choir, they were just singing all these beautiful carols and mm. then this this celebration, this celebration, here, here it was in the, the dead of night, in the darkness, and yeah. yet there was that, that light coming through, that hope that the star was shining. It was that, that point of revelation that here is the Christ. Here is the Christ. Yes. You know, my, we just came off a West of Heaven event, our holiday event with FSD in California. And that was, I call it magical in a sense. But Mm -hmm. there was such a presence that still filled the auditorium and also when we ate our dinner and then we had prayer time afterwards. And that same sense of what you're feeling right now, listening to this conversation that is filling the room that you're in, the car that you're in, at work, the room that you're in. That presence is with us. One of the decrees for Christmas, when Christ was born, it says, call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And a lot of times in our own lack or our emotional well-being, sometimes we can feel lonely or separated. And that's actually not a true statement because God, Emmanuel, is with us. And to me, that's why it takes people. It takes two or more are gathered in thy name, there I am in the midst. So Kathy and I represent the whole for our community, representing God, Christ, the spirit of the living God, Emmanuel, that propels us or draws us into this mystery of following the light in our darkness. We really carried out in that perspective, what we seek, we will find. And actually, it's our creator calling us, seeking us out. So to me, that's why as of the time is limited and we get darkness earlier during the day or the afternoon, and we have longer periods of darkness and light. But yet, we all look forward to spring. We all look forward to summer when there's more light than dark. Well, within the same context of seasons, we have this, especially during the Christmas season or the Festival of Lights. We clear the slate of our own doing, so to speak, and we allow a greater proportion of God's love and light to really to fill us. And I think that's the, really the, um, the, the place of an awareness of God's presence in our lives. I listened, or hopefully we all did our homework. Part of that assignment was to read Matthew, the first and second. And it talks about the Magi's following the light and following the star. And can you imagine the wonder of that, the mystery of that? And because the light was so bright, we couldn't miss it. Just like today, the full moon can represent that big star star. If we follow our dreams, a lot of us lose our dreams or get very sad around Christmas or the holidays is because we don't have that same feeling as we did as a little child. And I just want to call that forth in this season of grace during this call. It's like, I want you to help to, you to remember that you're never alone, that you're loved by God tremendously and this community. There were so many at the West of Heaven who just appreciated the fellowship, just the love that people had. And I know there was a couple there that brought their parents in first time, and they said, this community loves so much. And I was so proud of that statement because it takes effort. It takes setting aside our stuff in order to serve others. So if you're in that one state of confusion maybe during this time, I would ask you to step out of that box, step out of that loneliness, and serve someone else, give to someone else. 
and you'll recognize there's something within us that wants to come forth. And that's really the birth of the Spirit, birth of Christ, again and again and again. So that's, to me, celebrating the, the season of grace, because to me, that's what it's all about. That's beautiful, Padre. The Rumi says, love is a bridge between you and everything. And I would say that Christ is the bridge between heaven and earth. And if you never made that commitment to a greater awareness of Christ's presence, what a beautiful time that would be now just to do it. And it's as simple, I receive you as my Emmanuel, God is with us, to go towards that beautiful light of grace. Kathy, don't you have a song that we at least prepared for, but maybe didn't make the cut, but I think it will fit perfectly in this one. Okay. Can you give me a hint, Padre? <laughs> <laughs> As Dana would say, tap the dime. <laughs> and I think it was the first or the second song that you prepared for. Just sensing there's okay. a... Why don't we... Kathy, why don't we do Silent Night? Do you have that? Yes, I'm pulling that one out right now because that okay. one is more familiar than the other Christ. Yeah, uh, okay, born perfect. One. Right, so that's the one that feels better. Silent Night, holy night, All is bright Round yonder virgin Mother and child All the infants so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silence night, holy night, shepherd's at the sky, glory stream from heaven above, heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior is born. Christ, the Savior, is Lord. As Kathy continues just to strum that, uh, that beautiful music, let me just offer a prayer for those who are alone or lonely in this season of light. Let the Good Shepherd warm against you find you in your place of despair or loneliness or in pain and allow that heavenly embrace of the Good Shepherd to come near you, to hold you in his tender arms and allow that grace, that mercy, that kindness to emanate from his very being, bringing rest to your soul, bringing rest to your mind, let that eternal I am presence, Emmanuel, God is with us to be with you. And Father, just release your angels now. Angels we have heard on high, that idea of, of there's someone watching over us, that is guiding us, that is bringing us closer to our Savior, our healer, our reconciler the abundance of this universe. When we receive the Christ light, the Christ energy, we ex expand beyond our normal body size and we walk in this eternal grace, anchored 
in the very character of Christ, the love of the Father, the love of the Divine Mother, most holy, very most holy. I thank you, O Lord our God, for that grace. In Psalms, I think it's 8, it says, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, God, the moon and the stars you set in place, what is mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? O oh Lord, our Lord, your magnificent name fills the earth. And isn't that quite remarkable? We can look at the stars tonight and just say, what a magnificent God we have. You know, and there's billions and trillions of <laughs> lights and stars, but we are also one of his stars. You know, Go ahead, Kathy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Israel Adonai You know, as we draw closer to the preparation of communion, our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrated the Shema, celebrated the breaking of the bread and the wine. We get our traditions from other people, our parents, our grandparents, our our rabbis, our priests, our yogis. Rituals are so important to draw us near, and isn't it always, (laughs) I would say, mostly about food that will draw us in? But when we offer it up to our God, just as we offer up our body as a living, living sacrifice to God to place on the altar, so in this season of grace where we are preparing in Advent, preparing for seeking the Lord's his birth, that we empty ourselves of um, our stuff, our anger, our resentment, our fears, our loneliness, whatever that might entangle us or, or hold us back from living life to the fullest this moment in time, let's make that conscious effort to say, Lord, this is me. Padre's talking about me. So I'm going to put my life, my home, my family, my brothers, my sisters on the altar, our country, this nation, the world. We can all do better. And so as we empty out ourselves of the things we lack in, that we don't sometimes have control over our sins, our addictions, our mouth, our gossip. You know, our words create. And so I, as a lead pastor of self-celebrating life, I place my words on the altar, my body, my service on the altar of God. So as we do this as a community now, Shema. Just sing it again, Kathy. Shema. 
offer our lives as a living sacrifice placed on the altar. So I think we're just going to move it right now into our communion service and just allow that grace to move us to that place of, of God's love, God's mercy, God's kindness. And we're just going to do it just a little bit different tonight. We have the elements, but I think I'll consecrate both of them and then we'll receive them. And then we'll also listen to Kathy's beautiful song that she prepared for, a communion song, after, after we receive it. So we really can move into this special place of grace that's already building within us. So if you have the, your communion elements, I'm going to just take the bread. It might be a cracker for you or whatever element that is. Adonai, Jesus took bread. And it was a very Jewish tradition. They might have done it opposite. First had the wine and then the bread, but we're just <laughs> following our Christian tradition, which there's no right or wrong. It's just an example of offering ourselves up to grace. So Holy Spirit, we just first ask. We, scripture always says Jesus took bread and he blessed it. And so you as a partner of Christ, a brother of Christ, a sister of Christ, you bless the element. Because we have that authority to do that. So in your individual home, just bless that element. And it said that Jesus said he broke the bread. Come, Holy Spirit, let your living presence manifest in our lives. And I love the breaking of the bread because it means that we share what we have. And that's really the light of Christ. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, oh, come let, us let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. For he alone is worthy. 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 One of the things that was just revealed to me in the breaking of the bread is another eloquent gift is what is broken in us? What relationship is broken in us? Whom have we hurt by our words? Or someone has hurt us by their words? It's in this breaking of the bread that what is broken can actually be healed. So in our, our mind or our hearts, let's just say the people that we have hurt or have hurt us, and now we're going to offer them as a point of contact to the offer, altar of God. Very symbolic, but very healing. Some of us 
we maybe didn't have a good relationship with our parents, one or both, or our siblings. It's a time to let go, a time to heal that. So it's during this breaking of the bread, our sacrifice, we offer it up to God. And then we'll take the, the elements of the wine or the juice, and you along with me, Jesus said it said he blessed the wine. So however you want to breathe on it, bless it by your words, by your thoughts, just consecrate this. Make it holy unto you for this beautiful sacrifice. Jesus said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant for you and for all eternity. So once we receive the Christ, the Christ's blood, he died for our sin, for the emptiness. He, he is the bridge at which heaven opens up for us, for that eternal light. And we just say, thank you, God. A lot of times you hear in conversation is, well, we're a blood brother or blood sister, which means that's generational, and which means we belong. So when we accept this, this communion, we're accepting the living Christ, the illuminating Christ, the powerful Christ, that not only washes us clean, but also bridges us for eternity. So as we receive these elements tonight, on behalf of all, we'll allow Kathy to minister to us. So receive the elements now. Kathy just continues to strum that song. I'm reminded of those who have gone before us who pointed the way to God's love, God's mercy, God's kindness. It might be a, a priest, a rabbi, a minister, who, or a, 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 a new acquaintance that pointed you to way, to light, to the Christ, to the Christ energy. We just want us to be aware of And for me, that was Padre Ron Roth. You know, his exquisite um, joy that he had, but his reverence for the scripture, but also for devotions, really lights up my world. 
he's not with us physically, but in the spirit he is. And anytime I pick up the scriptures for a devotional, I go back to those times of when he taught us this. And there's a rich blessing in the scripture says when we can take the old and bring it into the new. And so these memories of the past, Christmases or the holidays, or your your uh, sacred time with the Lord in meditation, they're real. They're they're whole. They're they're an essence of light that wants to be recharged again in the spirit. So at this time, just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, and just be grateful for our beautiful teachers. Even in that category, it can be our enemies that actually forced us to grow and become that person that you are today. So even in the, the bright darkness, the gift was there to be revealed. And as we continue to celebrate the season of grace, the more awareness of God's presence now, just really sense this flowing of the Spirit now in your world, in my world. We're connecting by the Spirit, by the very holy breath of God, the Ruha. I just say thank you. Thank you, God, for this holy moment of grace. You know, when Mary gave birth to Jesus, can you imagine the responsibility of holding this gift into your arms, carrying it for nine months, and then actually letting it out into the world to see? And could you imagine when the Magi came and says, can we see the Christ child? Can we see the Savior, Emmanuel? And first of all, I'm sure it was a shock, like, how did you know? They said, we followed the star. But she's holding, and Joseph is holding this precious gift. And one of the first gifts they had to do was show them the light. And each of us, in our own way, can do that during this season. Show someone else your light. Not what you own, but what owns us, who is becoming us. And that's Christ's light. And those small gestures mean so much in this time of need and desire. So as a point of contact during this season of light, the winter solstice, let's allow that new light to penetrate darkness, to touch another person's life in a special way, whether it's just reaching out, maybe giving them some money if they, they're poor or homeless, food, whatever it might be. Maybe it's just inviting somebody over for Christmas or just celebrating the season. Invite them to your home. Invite them to your family. Those little things matter. I remember the first time my parents actually, because we lived on a farm and because we were such a large family, inviting people over meant less and less food on the table. <laughs> And so we really didn't get invited out, and we actually didn't invite people in because we were kind of a close-knit group, but it was more economical than anything. And my parent, or my dad invited this older gentleman into our home, and he stayed overnight, and it was like, that was shocking to us. It was like, how, how did you do this? He goes, well, he was lonely. And it's like, okay, well, my dad showed us there's more, there can be more love, even though he had 13 beautiful souls in this family with mom, they allowed another person into the family. And isn't that, if we think about our circles of friends, do you ever allow another person in? Or how we worship to invite another person into that experience? There's always this, the whispers of heaven, which we talked about at our last retreat, was the whispers of heaven. And it's like, we need to follow this because right now the Holy Spirit is so alive because it was the Holy Spirit who revealed the Christ to us. And then all the gifts, all the love, all the miracles happen. So we actually have the miracle worker within us. And if we allow that grace to touch while we celebrate this Christmas season, the sanctifying grace happens. When we step out of our box, our norm, and allow grace to touch us, that could be extraordinary in our lives. So we just praise and thank you, O Lord our God. And Mary, most holy, thank you for giving birth to this brilliant light within us. And if you have maybe a difficult time with connecting with Christ, you know, ask Mary to show you. She's our great intercessor. And we couldn't have Christmas without Mary because of that beautiful gift. She surrendered her life 
and became the first tabernacle for the light to come. And now we get to experience that tabernacle by hosting the presence in our lives. And there's, there are such treasures for all of us. Kathy, can you remember a time when that presence overtook you? Maybe it was in a ritual. Maybe it was in the silence. But there is a time where all we receive. Yes. Well, at our communion service, during our retreat, the fall retreat, as well as during the most recent list of heaven, when we were worshiping and we were, this was before the communion again, and we were singing the great Shema, there was such a power and presence that the room was, was just thick with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in both of these situations, both of these, not situations, these experiences, this yeah. dwelling within the tabernacle, when, when there was a break announced, or in, in one case it was the ending communion service of the fall retreat, the other it was a break during the day of the West of Heaven. There were so many people that did not want to get up and leave and go to lunch mm. or, or to exit because it was so palpable. It was, we were so held. And, yes. and I was, personally speaking, I was so held. I, I did not want to disrupt that. I did not want to, to leave that, that place of deep communion mm. and bliss. You mentioned that about our West of Heaven, and it was, you know, right, we were doing some healings right before the lunch hour, and then I dismissed yes. everybody. But easily half the people did not move out of their seat. They did not and move, like, and then no, and Padre, they did not move. And you came back, and you continued to minister. You didn't go to lunch either. You you saw people were there, and, and you <laughs> were well. But I'm saying it, it was it was so powerful, and yeah. and I saw you continuing to minister to people. As some they were almost uh, one. I remember uh, this person was almost like frozen, and yeah. you. You went and you touched her, and then she was able to fully rest in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. See, in those holy just... moments, that's where the, the Shema, that's where the presence really, the glory of God is. And it's our response to respond to that presence. That's the miracle working power of God's love. And I love, I've always loved that. And it was always been my desire once I was the privilege of leading this community that that atmosphere that experience would come back because that's what I lived with with Padre Ron Roth and because of dying the seed has to die and go back into the ground and rise again and that's pretty much was my life when I took over and now this seed is growing and that presence is growing and that stillness of grace and we've seen that even in the our fall retreat that presence that presence that presence and absolutely and you're feeling it now on this call what it follows it it dwells within us because it's Emmanuel but once we give it attention once we give it worship and praise we get activated and then we can take that to our family, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, because it's, it's in that alignment with heaven. So now heaven here is here on earth. And what are we going to do with that precious gift? And that's right. That's and Padre, you, you mentioned the solstice, the time of the solstice, which is mm. the time after we go into the darkest point, we now more fully return to the light. And this is what we're yes. doing as we're coming into this point of communion now and as we're talking about the star and and uh, the the magi coming at epiphany right that time of we're having our own epiphanies aren't we Mm -hmm. we're having that manifestation within us a realization that opening that opening place of greater light of greater acceptance of grace pouring in and therefore then able to pour out into the world to be able to light the way for others. Mm. I, th- I love that, Kathy, because that's the true essence of, to me, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christmas, Christ within us. And once we can recognize and or have that unction within us, that anointing within us, then yeah. we want to give it away because it's not us, it's that living spirit within us. And I really sense that now. And for those who have a candle, 
near you, just gaze upon that candle. There is the light of Christ. There is that. It's simple. It's, it's just light, but it's more than just light because you put that light towards a piece of paper and it's going to go up in flames. It's going to, it's going to grow. It's going to consume and it has its own force. So as we maybe place our hand on our hearts, we're just going to, I'm going to just decree God's brilliant light begin to expand and grow in each one of you. And within that expansion, that presence, it begins to heal our emotions. You know, our emotions have really captured our, or held us captive sometimes because we never had the release. But I really sense the Holy Spirit wants to heal our emotions, our emotional bodies right now. So Holy Spirit, just come. Not only dwell, but manifest your presence. Empower it to grow. Release its its mercy, its kindness, its forgiveness. Release forgiveness in all those areas. We forgive ourselves, but we also forgive those our, our offenders. Come, Holy Spirit. Just come. Just a divine, uh, like a nusami just going through it this huge wave just wash over us by presence just breaking away the chains of darkness illness disease addictions in the name of jesus the light has come and now expel the darkness and bring an eternal light eternal light grant unto them eternal light in their in their bo- physical bodies in their spiritual bodies in their emotional bodies now cleanse and renew cleanse and renew just more power more presence holy spirit just go like a tidal wave go like a tidal wave wash away those years of grief and aloneness and allow your peace that passes all understanding the flow now. Thank you, O oh Lord our God, for this gift of life. Thank you for the miracles, healing of the eyes, healing of the eyes, healing of the ears, healing of the ears. I thank you, O oh Lord our God. The angels are here, the ministering angels are here now to transform your life from dark to new life, from sickness to new health. I thank you, O oh Lord our God, for the for the flow of the Spirit. All irritations in the body, all infection in the body, I break its hold now through the name of Jesus. Let this divine light, I feel such heat. Many of you are feeling just tremendous heat over your body right now. That's the very presence of Yeshua. We thank you, O Lord our God. That's the presence of Mary helping us along our, our pathways to cleanse us, to renew us, to restore us so we can fill it with more of God's light and God's power and God's presence. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord our God, for this gift. I speak to any disease, terminal disease. I break that curse in your life in the name of Jesus. I break that curse right now through the blood of Christ, through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. We thank you, O Lord our God, for all accusations with us or with others. I break its hold. I break the grip of fear in the name of Jesus, for we represent God's light, God's love, and it's the character of Christ that we stand for. We are the carriers, the carriers of God's light and love, and nothing else shall be seen again unless it's God's love and light. So our perceptions change, our attitudes change, our to receive others into our lives change. So we won't let darkness scare us no more. We will see the light and enter into that beautiful promise of Christ. The light has come. And will dwell among us. Emmanuel, God is with us. I thank you, O Lord our God, for your abundance. So once we let go the the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the abundance of God, the gifts of God, the characters of Christ now stands firm within us. And we become an attractor field for the good, for the abundance, so the new jobs, the spouse you're looking for the mate you're looking for, the new job you're looking for, the creation of a new business. I thank you, O Lord of God. It's in this brilliant light, the star of David, the star that now leads you to your promises. I just decree new promises, new opportunities, new miracles that opens the door for your promise that was once hidden or maybe you let the light go out in it. The Holy Spirit is stirring that up, lighting it again. And it says, I promise you this. My word says it is so. So we allow now God's grace to move you, to position you, 
for the abundance, for there's abundant flow, abundant health, abundant healing, abundant finances, for new homes for people that couldn't, get a, 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 couldn't afford a house, now they'll be able to afford a house because God will position them to, for its eternal light that dwells within us. We just celebrate God today. We just celebrate the birth of Jesus in our lives. We praise and we thank you, O Lord, our God. I thank you, O Lord, our God, for this community of celebrating life. I could, I just say thank all the ministers, the bishops, the monks, the ordained, the students, the acolytes, the friars, the novices, everyone who attends, who listens to these podcasts, to these who attends the West of Heavens, the East of Heavens, the Springs and Fall Retreats, and for those places we go elsewhere and expand. God says, it is so, I multiply. Just like bread, I will multiply it. So the flow has already begun. Your prosperity, your attendance will continue to double and triple because we love the fellowship with each other. I thank you, O Lord our God, for the gift of my life and those who have shown me the way to your love. So, Kathy, as we end this program, the Alleluia is so important. It seems to just rise up within us as a celebration of God's love. We're going to close this very holy moment of of holy lights tonight, celebrating Christmas, New Year's, and new birth. We just say thank you, O Lord our God, for participating in the breaking of the bread, receiving the new wine, the new life in each one of us. We bless our families, our children, our our next-door neighbors, that we become now more of this eternal light in a dark world. I thank you, O Lord, our God, for birthing within us a new promise, a new hope, a future, and a hope. So may the good Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and your family and grant you peace, shalom in all areas of your life. And I bless you and we bless you as a community in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And on behalf of Kathy, Bambale, and myself and our community, Merry Christmas, a prosperous New Year, and may the light of Christ bring brilliance, openness, opportunity to all areas. And namaste, my friends. Walk with God. Lord, the name of all.